Indianapolis against Georgia Tech. Tanya Jakiri is the leading rebounder in the conference, trying to go up against some of the size that Florida State has with Kofor and Ojo in the starting lineup. Xavier Rattan Mays, the co-ACC Rookie of the Week, has been dynamite the last two games for the Knowles. It'll be Ojo and Jakiri. That'll be a good matchup to watch over the course of the day today. And the Canes win the tip. Some impressive wins this year. This is coming off his worst game as a member of the Hurricanes when scoreless against team in over 14 months it's the number 23 Miami Hurricanes in town to take on the Knowles and Miami could be the most enigmatic team in the ACC a couple of weeks ago they go on the road to Cameron nobody beats Coach K by 16 at Cameron but Jim Laranega's crew did it but then on Wednesday night at home against the Georgia Tech team that hadn't won an ACC game all year Miami laid an egg and lost by 20 Adam Amin, Brad Doherty with you. Brad, all of a sudden there's a log jam of seven teams with three, four, or five losses, but that's life in the ACC. Yeah, a lot of parity in, in the ACC right in the middle of the heart of it. And I tell you, let's just wait till next week and it'll all change again. <laughs> Miami and Florida State getting set to go here. The starting lineup, Angel Rodriguez is coming off his worst game as a member of the Hurricanes when scoreless against Georgia Tech. Tanya Jakiri is the leading rebounder in the conference, trying to go up against some of the size that Florida State has with Kofor and Ojo in the starting lineup. Xavier Rattan Mays, the co-ACC Rookie of the Week, has been dynamite the last two games for the Knowles. It'll be Ojo and Jakiri. That'll be a good matchup to watch over the course of the day today. And the Canes win the tip. Some impressive wins this year, especially on the road for Miami. Miami's actually played better on the road, it feels like, than they have at home. But they've beaten Florida and Duke and Syracuse all on the road. Davon Reed misses a three to start the day. Meanwhile, the Knowles have won two of their last three to get to three and five of the ACC, coming off a hard-fought double overtime win against Wake Forest on Wednesday. There's Jim Laranega, 31st season as a collegiate head coach in his fourth season at Miami. It's done very nice work. Of course, the ACC title a couple of years ago with that veteran-laden team led by Shane Larkin. Rodriguez, Rattan Mays, Brad, fun matchup that we're going to keep an eye on for most of this day today. Outstanding matchup. Rodriguez had a tough shooting night against Georgia Tech, 0 for 8. And Rattan Mays has had outstanding basketball games the last several games. So should be a great, explosive matchup throughout the day. You see Leonard Hamilton, 230 wins. Only J.K. Kennedy has more in Florida State history, 236. So he's closing in on him. Nice recovery by Jakiri on Rattan Mays. So they rotate to the other side for Ocho, who loses it to Tanya. But have to be very, very careful with the basketball, talking about Florida State, simply because possessions will be key throughout this day. Miami really likes to push the pace. They want to create spacing on the floor and get opportunities in transition. Florida State's not a very good three-point shooting basketball team, so every shot and every possession will be critical. You see Brad's keys to the game. Miami wants to push the pace. They can play with just about anybody in terms of pace. They've done it against Duke. They've done it against Virginia. Two very different teams trying to push it a little bit against Florida State today. McClellan to Rodriguez, the two transfers team up for a bad-looking shot by Angel. He had really struggled. 0 for 8 against Georgia Tech, went scoreless for the first time in his Miami career, the former Kansas State Wildcat. And it's absolutely playing on his mind, Adam. I watched him practice last night. He made shot after shot after shot. Michael Ojo breaks the scoring seal, and it's a 2-0 lead for the Florida State Seminoles. Last win over a ranked team for Florida State. You got to go back to December the 21st of 2013 when they beat UMass at a neutral site. Ojo for Florida State is absolutely a monster of a guy. Nice little turnaround jump shot, hook shot down on the, on the offensive end for Florida State. As they come back, and Monte Brandon double dribbles. He's the only Florida State player to start all 21 games this year. It's been kind of a shift in the lineup over the course of the season. Aaron Thomas, who's been ruled ineligible, has since hired an agent. He's pursuing a professional career. Booker was out for a good chunk five games earlier this season. So the roles were very much not defined for Florida State until a good stretch where they went 5-1 and one between December and January. Struggled a little bit after that, lost three in a row, but they've won two of their last three now. They're right in the thick of a very good ACC. We had a lot of close basketball games. Very competitive night in and night out. Just haven't been able to get all the victories for this young basketball team. Phil Colfer, very athletic, blocks Rodriguez, who has started 0 for 2 in this game. 0 for his last 10 in his last two games. He's trying to be aggressive and going up top, and he gets the assist to Davon Reed. 
They love to throw the ball up top to Davon Reed, one of the most athletic players in this entire conference. He loves to catch those alley-oop passes. You really got to watch on the back line if you're defending and pay attention to that cut behind you if you're Florida State, simply because that's what will happen all evening long. Nice job by Kyle Turpin, who checked into the game for Ojo. He slapped it back to Rattan Mays. Talked with Kyle Turpin before the game. I played with his dad, Mel Turpin, the late Mel Turpin, yep. in Cleveland. And Kyle is developed into a fine young man. Had a lot of fun down here for the stage. Angel Rodriguez going aggressive to the rim, draws a foul. Listen, if Angel Rodriguez is going to struggle offensively, there are other things he can do, like steal the ball like he did now or pass. He is absolutely a, a threat no matter what he's doing, shooting the basketball or driving the basketball. That's great finding his teammate, Devin Reed, who's looking to go for that alley-oop pass. Angel Rodriguez leads the team in assists with four and a half. He leads the ACC in steals, but his scoring numbers have gone down significantly ever since he lit up Duke for 24. He is five for his last 39 from wow. the floor wow. in that four-game stretch. And at practice last night talking about Devon Reed, you know, coach is really wanting him to shoot the basketball. He, uh, coach Laranega encourages his team to take shots, take three-point shots. Don't be afraid. Let it go. Traveling violation though here for Reed. Well again, Angel Rodriguez just missed two free throws, but he slapped the ball up in the air and got another possession, even though it was a turnover. So you get the sense he might be pressing a little bit offensively, but he's trying to do other positive things. Coach Laranega has asked Angel to, to continue to bring the energy. They need his energy, his enthusiasm. The team feeds off of it, but he is absolutely in a funk shooting the basketball. Like I said, last night at practice, he couldn't miss. Adam is unbelievable. Yep. He's shooting everywhere. Today, it's in your head, it's in your mind. Keep shooting. Turpin against Jakiri and a nice show on the double by McClellan forces him into a walk. So Miami defensively playing solid to start the day. Kyle Turpin caught that basketball. Wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do with it. Didn't know if he wanted to dribble, turn, and shoot a hook shot or throw it back out. Got caught in between and that was the problem. Florida State about 13 and a half turnovers a game. Miami only averages about 10. They're top 12 in the country in fewest turnovers. Florida State has already turned it over four times in five trips. Rodriguez to Jakiri, one of the most improved players in the ACC. Could not finish at the rim. Got to be big down that block against Florida State. I'm telling you, you go up, you got some big bodies going up with you, trying to block that shot. Bill Culver on the interior got it knocked away, and Jakiri clears it. The leading rebounder in the ACC, Rodriguez, a beautiful pass, but he just couldn't find it cleanly with McClellan. <laughs> well, I tell you, he threw that ball up right in front of us. McClellan went up and had it. Probably to pay. <laughs> and Serpent from the baseline comes back down to the seven-footer, knocks down a long jumper. Florida State has the lead again. I, I, I just got to give credit to Angel Rodriguez because you can tell it's in his head offensively But he's trying so hard to do something good for this team and almost forcing the issue Still the leader of this basketball team. They need him. That's another assist. He kicks it out to Reed Just what we talked about Devon Reed last night coach was important shoot that basketball and I tell you it's one of the few teams in this conference one of the few teams I've seen that encourages everyone to shoot that Absolutely. three point ball. And so what it is, it's self-policing because guys become a little bit hesitant because they don't want to seem like they're shooting too much. But they have all got the green light besides the carry to shoot that three. A foul on Kyle Turpin as he was banging down low with Jakiri, so wave out the basket. That'll take us to a timeout. Rodriguez, a couple of assists. Davon Reed has all five points for the Hurricanes, who lead by one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is right there. Just clap his hands together. I mean, it's, it's so tough for young basketball players, especially once you get to this level. This is big time basketball and you start missing these shots and he knows how important he is to his basketball team and every possession that he has in his hand. So he wants to make them count. A lot of pressure on him. Keep shooting it though, Angel. Let him start to fall. Joe Thomas, the lone grad student or senior, is in this game for Miami, as is Manu Leconti, who had a great game against Duke a couple of weeks back in that upset victory. Brandon comes back for the Seminoles and takes it coast to coast into Jakiri and strong to the rim goes Monte Brandon. Oh, I like that drive by Brandon. He caught the defense with their back turned to him and no, no yielding pressure, no pressure to stop him. The pressure was yielding. He just kept advancing. Great basketball IQ. Recognize what's going on. Sheldon McClellan, the transfer from Texas, buries a three. He's 34% from the outside. Miami gets 36% of its points from three-point range. That's the most in the ACC in terms of percentage. 
talking to Coach Laranega, they want to outscore you. They want the basketball game to be in the 70 to 75 to 80 point range in order to take advantage of this score. I know you like that. Yeah. Kyle Turpin, the left-handed hook. Big Kyle Turpin post up on that block, turns around, shows the, the ability with the left hand. Nice little hook shot. Want to see more of that. You see the three-point field goal attempts for Miami. Nobody shoots more from outside of the ACC. Nobody gets a higher percentage of their points from three-point range in the ACC than the Hurricanes. And no one gets less than Florida, Florida State. State. So, it's, you know, they get a lot of twos. So, at the end of the day, the numbers don't add up. They've got to be really responsible defensively and box out and defensively rebound the ball. There is Leconte. Shot clock is already down at four. He's got to go against the taller Brandon, and that's a walk. So it is a turnover. Okay, so when we're done... Special edition of ACC Sunday Night Basketball. Special edition of Pac-12 Basketball coming your way as well when we're done. Utah's trying to bounce back. They suffered a pretty tough loss, a pretty good win for UCLA the other night. They'll get set to take on USC when we're done on ESPNU. So we'll get to see DeLon Wright and, yeah. and Jakob, one of my favorite names, uh, Portal in, uh, Portal in uh, Utah. Love what uh, Larry Kostoyak's done. Unbelievable. He he's got to be. He's got to be a national coach of the year. I, I think right so. Now. I think so. I mean, I think Larry Kostoyak is your coach of the year candidate right now. With what he's done, he's done an excellent job that basketball program. Jarquez Smith. I want to talk about athletes? Jarquez Smith has about as much athleticism as anybody for the Knolls. That, that young man is a tremendous athlete. We talked to him earlier. He was kidding a little bit about. He's a race fan as well. So I told him he is. The, we're going to talk about him a lot when he posts my race team. But yeah, I told him. You know, he, he really needs to, to attack today. I'd like to see him get 12 points, 10 rebounds. He'd be an excellent fit for this Florida State team today. He said he's going to give his best shot. Big AJ Allmendinger fan, so you know he's smart, right, Brad? Absolutely. Sheldon Absolutely. McClellan is on fire to start tonight. He's got a couple of the threes already. Miami back on top. Never seen a coach or coaching staff so comfortable with their basketball theory of letting these guys shoot these three-point baskets. And you can see what happens, like you saw in Cameron the other night, where they scored 90 points. It can be dynamic. They can absolutely light you up. So it's a tough, it's a tough out playing Miami. Robbie Bowen knocks down the three. His first point since you and I saw him against Syracuse. That was back on January the 11th. Like the toughness that Robbie Burwick brings into the basketball game. Hard-nosed player, competes really, really hard, and he can make those out shots. So you love having him on your basketball team because if he comes off that bench, you don't lose one ounce of toughness. Kid who broke his nose and was playing with a mask for a little while early in the season. McClellan dumping it off underneath for Joe Thomas. Joe Thomas, the lone grad student on this team. No seniors for the Miami Hurricanes. So it's a team that's going to bring back a lot of talent next season. Coach Larry Nagel's done an excellent job this basketball team. Two transfers on this team who come in and play big minutes. That is six turnovers for Florida State as Berwick lost his footing. But we're tied up at 13. Nice pace to this game early, Brad. I love it. I think it's an equally matched basketball game thus far. I like what I see so far. Nice pass out to the corner. Berwick buries that jumper. Come back down Miami. Aggressive physical. Let's play ball. Pittsburgh gets the upset. Absolutely right. Pittsburgh's a dangerous basketball team to play against. As they get healthy, as they, as they get more experience, they're going to be even tougher. So as you go through out the ACC, there's not an easy out any night in this league. Every team in this league plays extremely hard and is very competitive. So you've got to have your A game every night. This is a nice addition to this Miami team. Yvonne Cruz Uceda, who's been recently ruled eligible. Missed the three, but Miami gets another three-pointer. And this one from Manu Lacanti, and it's the largest lead on either side. Lacanti, a 44% shooter. Hey, like I say, they're coming into the game. His first shot of the game is a what? It's a three. Adam, I'd love to play for this guy. Man, jacking those threes up. How many could you? Could you? I don't know if you can shoot me threes. Like, <laughs> nah. shoot Man, it's awesome. Fun to watch. Rattan Mays bounced it off of Thomas and I. Xavier Rattan Mays, one of the great freshmen in this conference. ACC co-rookie of the week along with Tyus Jones of Duke. Ball inside on Thomas for Miami. Talking about Lacanta, you know, he's, he's from Belgium. And uh, back in the day, Coach Laranega played a little basketball, played club, club basketball uh, professionally in, in Belgium. Right. So he's got direct ties. And uh, he was telling me last night that they never even saw this kid play in person. And he had not seen Miami play in person. And they uh, linked up and started talking, having conversations. And lo and behold, here he is playing on this basketball team. Boris Bojanovsky, one of those seven-footers, is in for Florida State. They've got three seven-footers on their roster. 
big basketball team, like you say, Florida State. Bojanovski continues to get better and better every week. Aggressive take by Rattan Mays and Cruz Yuseta. You look at what this basketball team has done at Florida State. We talked about the last time we covered their, their game. You know, they have the third most wins in the league behind uh, North Carolina and Duke in the last 10 seasons. That's quite an accomplishment. I mean, this team, just a couple of seasons back, won an ACC championship. Right. And so uh, they continue to try to build. And this is one of the younger teams that Coach Hamilton's had. Yeah, they've got recruiting, got recruiting down. They've got some great recruits coming in next season. But... He is still teaching a lot of basketball to these young guys. And so they're in a lot of close games, but they haven't been able to finish it. But there's light at the end of the tunnel, I do believe, for this basketball team. Here comes Jaquan Newton, freshman out of Philadelphia. Numbers have been down since a good game against Notre Dame. And Newton, very nicely around that big body of Joe Thomas, helping him to get a free space to the lane. Like the aggressiveness of Newton, he turned that corner Got a little bit of a bump, but saw the C's basically part in front of him. No defensive help. He went right to the rack. 7-0 Miami run has given them their largest lead. Monte Brandon banging on the inside on the offensive glass draws a foul. Big game coming up on Tuesday night. Journey to the Tourney presented by Sonic. Spotlight on impact games. Indiana has struggled at times on the road. Lost to Ohio State. Lost to Purdue last week. to go on the road to take on potential national player of the year, Frank Kaminsky, and the Wisconsin Badgers who beat Iowa yesterday. That's Tuesday at 7. Indiana's a dangerous basketball team. They play that five-guard rotation at yep. times. That is a matchup nightmare, especially when they're making shots. Devin Booker back into the ball game. Brandon Allen also making an appearance in just his 13th game of the season. Or to stay back with it for halfway through this opening half. On Super Bowl Sunday, got a couple of historic football powers going at it for the 74th time. All time on the hoops floor. Cruz Uceda, a little bit long on the three. Brandon trying to push the pace. Miami's really trying to create spacing. That's what they do best. When they space the floor and create opportunity, it, it really stretches this Florida State defense. And I see a little bit of an issue simply because of all the big guys having to chase out on these three-point shots. Booker tried to take a rhythm three, and Bojanovski reached over the top on the rebound and got called for the foul. So what you'll see, Adam, on Florida State defensively, the problem's going to come when the drives happen. Whenever the guards from Miami decide to drive the basketball, Florida State's a bigger team, and usually they're around the basket, but they're so concerned with getting out and protecting that three-point ball that it's softening up that interior defense by Florida State. Coach Hamilton's going to have to make a huge adjustment and get everyone to be disciplined and stay home because they're going to start giving up layups if they're not careful. The freshman Newton helping to run the point. Wojciechowski a good show out of the perimeter. Rodriguez against Booker got cut off. Just hounding him out on the perimeter, trying to force a pass. It'll stay at this end of the floor with eight on the shot clock. Very good communication on defense. And the backdoor cut was defended extremely well. A lot of good rotations by Florida State. The adjustment has been made. They understand that this team is looking to shoot that three-point ball, so they're going to make sure they stay home. Shot clock down to six. Good rotation for Rodriguez, who steps over. Had to shoot it over Brandon and just couldn't get it to rattle down. Ojo. Rodriguez trying to help on the show. That's, again, as we said, something that Rodriguez can still do positively. Even though some of the shots aren't going down, still the best thief in the ACC in terms of steals. Good job dropping back to help out Jakiri, who's an excellent shot blocker. Ojo is a big dude. Turned those big broad shoulders, and it was great help by Rodriguez coming up out of team. Brandon, nice cut by Kofer, but ran into Jakiri, and that big body alone enough can force you off target and off track, and that's what happened to the freshman Kofer. One dribble too many. Uh, Kofer tried to get inside and establish with a power dribble. You got to go right up into his chest. Talking about Jakiri, if you want to get a shot off. One of Brad's keys was. Making sure you handle the basketball if you're Florida State. You have to value possessions. And right now, seven turnovers in this first half against the Knolls. That, that will not lead to success against this ball club. 
a tough try by James Palmer. Six foot five, 200 pound freshman out of Washington, D.C. The softening of that defense is he tried to get to the basket because he thought it was going to be an open channel way. Good defense again, though, by Florida State. Jakiri picks up his first foul. Talk with Lamar Simpson about that call. Michael Stevens, Lamar, Lamar Simpson, Tim Comer, our officiating crew today. Veteran crew, Michael Stevens has Final Four experience. Here's Allen, just the 13th game he's playing in this season out of the 22 for the Florida State Seminoles. Uh, Ojo was trying to flip it back out to Brandon, who had already cut eight turnovers for the Florida State Seminoles, but still only down by four in the early going here in Tallahassee. Wendy's 100 on the women's side. A lot of basketball left. That's all I'm going to say. You know, we were looking at, uh, I know you're not necessarily a fan of all the metrics, but just kind of foreshadowing, the BPI has Kentucky's chances to go unbeaten right around 50% the rest of the way. Now, still a lot of basketball to be played. Game day will be in Gainesville this Saturday for that Kentucky-Florida matchup, and that's always a tough place to play for Kentucky when they got to go on the road in Gainesville. Well, the BDI says it's higher than 50%. I'll <laughs> tell you that, that right that now. The, is that the Brad Doherty index? <laughs> exactly I'm, I'm just right. assuming that's the Brad Doherty index. That's exactly right. Booker covered by Rodriguez. Florida State in a bit of a drought right now. Five minutes without a field goal. Brandon trying to cut and get free, and he flips it up. Way off. Tough shot, obviously. The difference in this basketball game, though, has just been the turnovers and taking care of the basketball for Florida yep. State. They've done everything else reasonably well defensively. They haven't made a shot in a while, but they've gotten some decent shots. But taking care of that basketball, not allowing transition baskets by Miami, has been a little bit of an Achilles heel thus far in this basketball game. That is the difference in the score. Just haven't valued possessions in the early going, some Jim Laranega preached about. Can Rodriguez make a shot? He finally does. First field goal in two games for Angel Rodriguez. Maybe that gets him going a little bit as Miami has its largest lead at seven. Like the way he squared up, took the shot with confidence. And Leonard Hamilton will use a timeout with 6.41 to play in this first half. Just any type of bucket, anything going down, a free throw, a field goal, anything it feels like can get Angel Rodriguez going. You know, and it even, he even feels like he's, he's got to go down, you know, after he gets the shot up because he, he just, everything's so hard when you're not making shots. So now it takes away possessions. It takes away opportunity for shots. So basically every time down the floor that you lose a possession, you got to take three points off the board potentially. So that is the deficit number we're looking at. And that's their biggest That's their biggest problem right now. And nine turnovers already for Florida State. Just three for the Miami Hurricanes who do a better job of taking care of the basketball about as well as any team in the country. Booker has not scored yet. Team's third leading scorer, Rattan Mays, trying to get going as well. Into traffic, and will that be basket interference? It will be. So Ojo went up to try to get that floating ball, but it was around the cylinder. Boy, Rutan Mays is really having a difficult time. Miami doing an excellent job putting people all around him. You see a really hard shot. And, uh, woo, that was... that, you know, from that angle, from the baseline angle, it looked like it may have been off the cylinder. Just but... a hair, but it was, it was a tough call without all the angles, and I yeah. think it was the right call. Yeah, from the naked eye, it certainly looked like yes. Ojo had yeah. interfered with it. Rodriguez stepped back over Booker and he left that one short. He's saying that Booker got a piece of it. Tim Comer's not buying it, and the Knolls have it. Oh, it's a tough shot out of the offense with the defender right in front of him. Booker was right in front of him. I know he wants to get going and get hot and, 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 and be a vital part of this offense for his team, but he needs to continue to do the little things. This shot. Oh, talking about Rodriguez. The 12 and a half minute mark. That was the last time that Florida State had a field goal. Nearly seven minutes without a bucket for the, for the Seminoles. How about the job they've done on the Tan Mays this far? Not yeah. allowing him any room to breathe. But he and Booker have not scored in this game. Brandon has one field goal. Brandon to Kofer. Shot clock is at six. And Kofer from the elbow. And it looked like Brandon was out of bounds when he made contact with the ball. He was on the baseline. And the drop continues for Florida State down by seven. We had good success with Kyle Turpin on the post, getting the ball down to Ojo. Continue to throw the ball inside of these guys, give them touches so you get good quality point-blank shots. 
we talk about Florida State having a size advantage, but so far in this game, Miami's done a nice job on the glass and done a nice job on the interior. They do a good job talking defensively, talking about Miami. They talk, they switch, they do an excellent job of communicating. They made it very, very difficult, but if Florida State would just take the time to play inside out, it would free up a lot. Rodriguez thought about it, just one bucket so far, and wide open Reed with the offensive rebound, and he takes it in. You know, it's funny, Leonard, Leonard Hamilton talked to us about that problem today, late in the game against NC State. Gave up late offensive rebounds on long misses like that, and Rodriguez, who leads the ACC in steals, takes it in to put him up 11. Leonard Hamilton needs a timeout. Yeah, three, ba three baskets at the end of the NC State game, long rebounds, absolutely. Eight Florida State alive. And again, Rodriguez, he does everything so well. Just uh, aggressive. On point, he was ready. He, was he has used those turnovers, taken advantage, and they've ballooned their lead out to double digits for the first time today. Ten points off those 11 turnovers so far for the Miami Hurricanes. Good cut by Turpin and got it stripped on the way up. It'll stay at this end of the floor. You get a pick and roll opportunity with a big guy, and uh, Turpin slipped the screen, but I don't want to throw a seven foot guy a pass basically a foot outside of the, the top of the key because there's nothing good that's going to come of that especially when he's running towards the basket so do you want to see a pass that's a little tighter towards the basket only if he's wide open okay. or, and, and and kyle can stop and shoot that jump shot but he was barreling toward the basket i just think that's putting him in a bad position to make a mistake which he did angel rodriguez has just picked up his second foul at the 429 mark so jim laranega goes back to the bench Brings Rodriguez back down to the pine for now with those two fouls. But Booker with a tough shot going to his left. Brandon tipped it up and out. And nothing coming easy right now for the Florida State Seminoles who've gone more than eight minutes without a field goal. Need some good interior screens. Florida State does. Create some opportunities to get the ball, like I continue to say, in the paint area and take some shots. Those shots they're taking right now are off balance. They're just difficult shots. That you're going to make some of them, but you're not going to make most of them. And they, they can't have that right now. There's Reed picked up by Rattan Mays. Right, Jakiri is getting fronted by Turpin. That long arm body is helping out. Lacant for three, and he knocks it down his second of the game. Boy, nice drive, and, and, and that just softened up the interior. It left LeConte wide open, and he absolutely was ready. Had the, had the machine gun ready to fire. How about this 17-1 to 1 run for Miami? And again, Florida State in this drought is struggling offensively. Miami looking for a bounce back after a 20-point home loss to Georgia Tech. Doing things early in this game. Turpin was way off, and here comes LeConte pushing the tempo again. Reed into Kofer, and he'll go to the free throw line on the other side of this break. And Miami offensively is starting to put some things together, Brad. Softening up that defense from Florida State to continue to attack. You see the nice drive right here. Good pass, his teammate by Reed, wide open. LeConte knocks it down, three points. There's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of every day. Where, where does Virginia end up? Maybe at four, maybe five, something along yeah, those qu lines? Quite possibly, but I think uh, they, they'll bounce right back. That basketball team is so good defensively. They hold the school really, really tight. You yeah. have to have your your best effort offensively to play against that team. So Duke, Duke seemed like Duke had to have that. Duke that played last great time. basketball yesterday. They really played well. If you can make three-point shots against Virginia and score the ball consistently, and not have long droughts, you can play with them. And Duke did a really good job of knocking down those out shots. A lot of consistency. Yeah. After an 0 for 9 first half, I mean, they yeah. went red hot in the second half. Those huge threes late down the stretch. We'll see Virginia in a couple of weeks here at ACC Sunday Night Basketball. We'll see this Florida State team go on the road to Charlottesville to take on what is now the number two team in the country. We'll see where they end up come the next poll. But you got to think they're not due to drop out of the top 10 much. They're uh, really no. at any time soon. No. A lot of perimeter passing right now. We need yep. entry passes. There you go. Very That's nice. what they're looking for. You wanted to see Bojanovski and some of the bigger guys get a, get a pass inside. 
So Bojo to the line, and ESPNU with our double header. We'll have Pac-12 action when we're done here in the ACC. You'll see DeLon Wright. You'll see the number 11 team in the country, the Utah Utes, are going to bounce back in Los Angeles against the Trojans. It's as soon as we are done. Pac-12 has been very competitive up at the top. A little more of a log jam in the middle. Maybe not as deep, but the, those top teams, your Arizona, your Utah, Stanford, playing really yes. well right yes. now. Yes, Johnny Dawkins Basketball Club is playing really well. So you're right at the top. It is very, very competitive. Uh, night in and night out in that basketball league. You play one of the top three or four teams. It's going to be a difficult night. Where is the ACC right now in your estimation? Because I think the Big 12 has probably gotten a lot of credit for being as deep as, as it is, and it is. Here he misses. Where is the ACC in your estimation? I mean, I continue. I've always been a little biased towards the ACC, but I do think if you look at it top to bottom, even with the teams, I mean, some of the teams that have struggled a little bit early on, you know, Clemson, and Wake Forest, teams like that, are starting to play better. Georgia Tech, they've had some pretty significant wins. So I think night in and night out in this conference, you can get beat. Any team can be beaten. I don't care if you're Duke, North Carolina, Virginia, whoever. You can be beaten by any one of these teams. So I think North, I think the ACC is the top conference. Reed finding Joe Thomas for his second bucket. 16-point lead for Miami. Nothing coming easy as Brandon finally puts it in. You see where they scored from. You see where that, that shot came from and where the basket was scored from. Interior passing into the paint. Now, he got there in a very difficult way, but that's okay. You got two guys, actually. Bojanowski was open as well. Nice pass into the interior. Leonard Hamilton told his troops, I want more passes into that lane, more point-blank shots. If we make them fine, if we miss them fine, let's get better shot opportunities. They went about ten and a half minutes without a bucket until Brandon finished off that three-point play on the second Jakiri foul. That's why Tanya is off the floor. Cruz Yuseta plays with two fouls. Reed is at a really nice first half. Jim Laranenko was asking Michael Stevens for a timeout. That'll be the first use by Miami. Dominant start for the Miami Hurricanes in this game. They've led by as many as 16 trying to bounce back after that 20-point loss. They've done everything well. They passed the basketball. They made their three-point shot, which they're they're seeking. Kids and it's sometimes some distractions at home. Well, this is odd, though. I mean, every college campus has distractions. I would think so, right? You know, even though it's Miami, there's more distractions. But it's still, <laughs> you know, it's just odd. It's a mentality. I watched these guys practice last night. This is a close-knit group, and they practiced very, very regimented last night. Very serious. After practicing yesterday before they left Miami. So I, I can't explain it. Uh, I think the focus just seems to lock down whenever they go on the road. You can make a case. I mean, you and I could we could give our opinions on it, and it would make sense. But I mean, this, it's so varied from team to team, depending what they do on, at home or on the road. Some yeah. teams just happen to like the atmospheres on the road a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think it's a combative punch. Sure. I think uh, they've got some guys that play with chips on their shoulder, and I think uh, once they get away from the confines of home, they just focus hard. Nice job by Lacan to find. Cruz Huseta coming into the game, or coming to the lane, playing in just his fifth game of the season. It's been a nice addition. Junior college transfer from Spain. Minute to play first half. Bojanowski, nice move. Gets past Cruz Huseta. That was one of the best post plays we've seen from Florida State today. Boy, I could use a healthy dose of that. Caught the basketball. You said I actually pushed him off the block further than I'd like to see, but he he's... He's Bojanowski. I was watching him early. He's got really good hands, as you can see. Nice turn. Put the ball on the floor. I mean, he looked like a six-six small forward turning the corner there. So we need more of this. More opportunities for this young man who's seven-three and got great length, great hands, and can can shoot the ball with both hands. Back within twelve. One minute to play. A couple of teams in that. Log jam in the middle of the ACC. Seven teams in the conference have three, four, or five losses on the year. McClellan, the transfer from Texas, has Bojanovski guarding him on the perimeter right now. He was maybe looking around for a switch. And McClellan is happy to take the shot clock down. Morris just needs to make him shoot over him, obviously. McClellan forced to give it up. Lacant slicing to the foul line and hitting. Smooth looking shot from the Belgium native. 
for this Miami basketball team. They just played the game. Whatever opportunity is available, they've got such freedom in their offense, they can put the shot up at the end of a, any opportunity that opens up and creates a, a chance. It goes up. I love it. Clock is down to six for a tan Mays. Trying to get going, and he knocks down a three to close out this half. That's a much-needed bucket for both Rattan Mays and the Seminoles. The team's leading scorer has his first point, 1958, into the half. But the big story in the opening 20 minutes was the turnovers. Miami forced 11 of them, got 10 points off those turnovers. And at the halftime break, it's a 36-25 lead for the Miami Hurricanes. ESPNU Halftime Report, Fitzy, Dino, take it away, boys. And that right there is unexcusable. You got to be aware. You got to focus. What I do like is this play right here. Kyle Durbin on the post. I like this play. Big Forrest turning to the basket, going to the basket. Let's get shots going to the basket if you're Florida State. Booker struggled in that first half, did not score. Bill Colfer didn't score either, so Jarquez Smith starts the half, and right away he is on the block and into the scorebooks here in the second half. He's got four points. Well, uh, you can tell Coach Hamilton had a, a nice heated exchange of, of, of verbiage in that locker room. <laughs> he wants that basketball on that block. They want to dominate that post with their size and get these good quality shots. That's going to get them right back in this game. Florida State had a ten-and-a-half-minute field goal drought in that first half and Miami ballooned the lead at one point up to 16. Rattan Mays gets called for his second foul as Rodriguez was penetrating. Angel had five points, two assists and two steals. Really struggled the other night on his worst game as a hurricane against Georgia Tech. Missed a bunch of shots early in the game but had a couple of buckets and trying to get going. That was 0 for 8 at, at Georgia Tech and that's really for a guy who He's a prolific shooter. It's obviously a bad, bad night. It, it bled over a little bit early, but he's getting going. Nice play by Brandon. Getting into the passing lane and throwing it down. Quick spurt to start the half by the Seminoles. Absolutely won't hurt to have some hustle plays. Great anticipation by Brandon. Up defensively in the passing lane. An inadvertent pass. Good job knocking it away. Sherman trying to throw it down with the left hand and drew the foul. The freshman Omar Sherman with a chance at his first points in a couple of games. Brandon does a good job. Look at him. Up to that passing lane, knock it away. Good deflection. Tips the ball to himself, goes down and finishes hard. Jarquez Smith picked up the foul. You know, we talk about Florida State size, and it's easy to just look at the seven footers, but you know, I watched Kentucky the other night against Missouri, and something that Seth Greenberg pointed out to me it's listen, it's not just the size Kentucky has vertically, it's horizontally, oh, it's, it's the length, length that they yes, have. Yes, that is deflections, and, and, and every basketball team will keep deflections. How many passes in those passing lanes you can get your hands on and knock away? Not necessarily the steal, but actually being in the correct defensive position to get that number. So that length is, is something that obviously you can't teach, just like height, and you want to utilize it. Devin Booker, five straight games in double figures, has not scored in this game. But Tan Mays did not score until the final seconds of the first half. Florida State shot 56% in the first half, but they only had 16 shots because of the because of the 11 turnovers. Didn't take good care of the basketball limits as you force scoring up to the lack of possession. Monte Brandon late in the clock has taken an 11 point halftime deficit and cut it down to six. Brandon really hunting for it on offense, playing good defense. <laughs> Just great energy right now from Brandon that's bleeding over to his, his teammates. For a free read, good cover up by Brandon. This to the inside and nowhere to go for Jakiri. It'll stay at this end of the floor with only three on the shot clock for the Hurricanes. Smith and Turpin, great rotation by both of those big guys to come over, go straight up and block that shot. Got to hurry. Deep one from McClellan, got it blocked by Smith. Shot clock violation. Good defense. I mean, that is something we haven't seen in this basketball game for Florida State is that lockdown defensive mentality that we just saw in that last possession. And we saw, obviously, Brandon early on getting in the lane, getting deflections. Defense is what this team's, this is what they've changed 
about this, this yeah. second half this fall. Made a couple of shots at the end of the first half. Hot start to the second for the Knowles. A team that built itself on defense under Leonard Hamilton. It's not as sharp the last season or so. Turnovers have continued to be an issue as Smith turns it over and he's up a little bit gimpy. Yeah, it looked like when he uh, started to make his initial move, they rolled that ankle over. Kind of the uh, wearing those, those mid-high shoes a lot of, of the guys wear today. I just yep. I don't see how you get away with it being a big guy. I know you get those ankles taped, but you're a high tech guy. Man, I'm a high tech guy. I just want that little bit of extra padding and cushion. Six-point game and a knock away by Brandon. His second steal of this half. Chased by Jakiri. Good job, man. Wow. I'll tell you what, that's the guy I want on my team. He is fired up. Great job by Brandon. Timeout, Miami. Losses, and if you have five losses in a very good conference at this point of the season, you're not out of it by any no. means to get a better seed or maybe even compete. That's correct. Towards the top. That is correct. Let's see how Miami responds. Rodriguez and Reed and McClellan and Thomas and Jakiri. A very good lineup out there for Miami right now. A little pep in the step defensively, though, for the Seminoles. Something we didn't see much of in the first half. Yeah, they were sitting back on their heels just trying to depend upon their side. That back door has been beautifully run today by Rodriguez and Reed. Well, you just see it being set up, and that, that's what happens. That You're trying to be aggressive defensively if you're Florida State, and you're, you're, you're moving forward, but it leaves that, that back area, the back line open. You've got to be aware and hustle back. Booker. In and out. And Shakiri, the leading rebounder in the conference, is there. Well, I don't mind that shot. I mean, that was that, that was down in the well. Nobody picked up McClellan, nearly made him pay, and then Shakiri bangs into Rattan Mays and picks up his third foul. This is the second time at least that back door has worked well for Miami. Yeah, they do such a good job. You see, the defender just got caught in no man's land. The defender for Florida State was trying to see the basketball and see his man at the same time and got too high above the line of the basketball. Then he lost sight of his man. Miami goes zone here. A little 2-3 look with Rodriguez and McClellan, who's got a lot of length at the top of the zone. Trying to take up some of that space inside is what Miami's trying to accomplish. But Tan Mays couldn't knock down the three. Smith used one arm to help secure that rebound. The athleticism of Jarquez Smith keeps this possession alive. Florida State doesn't shoot the ball extremely well from the, the perimeter. So that's what they're trying to force. Miami's trying to force them to shoot the basketball from the outside instead of right there. Well, they found a nice spot in the middle of the zone. Kyle Turpin came flying in. So did Monte Brandon. And Florida State's right back within four. Monte Brandon, someone better get a body on him. Yes, he He's going to do it himself. Start. Yes. McClellan to Rodriguez, who fires a three. And that's going to be a foul against Florida State as Turpin went over the top of Jakiri. But Monte Brandon already has nine points in the second half. Nice pass down, down low. Nice little turnaround jump shot, but here comes Brandon coming in, cleaning up everything. Yeah, the keys, man. Number 20 with Al Golden at the helm. He's had a bunch of top 15 classes over the course of his Miami career. Of course, Miami's basketball team has DeAndre Burnett. His brother, Dalvin Cook, was a freshman running back for the Florida State Seminoles this year. Ran for 1,000 yards. Good athletes in that family, Oof. obviously. Man. Very close to their grandmother, who helped get a bunch of athletes off to college. Sure. Here is Manu Lacant on that aggressive drive. Reed has nowhere to go. Good job by Florida State. Lacant turned the corner trying to see if it was going to be softened up because of everyone expecting to get out and defend on that three point. Nowhere to go. Jakiri has two big bodies to go against Smith and Bojanovsky. Bojanovsky defended, and here comes Florida State trailing by four as close as they've been since they trailed by 16 in the first half. And a whistle and a foul against Miami. It'll be against Joe Thomas. Well, Bojanovsky just. Absolutely leveled McClellan on the pick. That pick right there. Woo! And they're running back in the offense here. Watch him set this pick right here. Bam! Oh, I tell you. 
Must be aggressive. That was aggressive. Defensively, your teammates got to talk. Oh, Smith was right there for it. Bojanovski kept it alive for Smith. And it'll go the other way. You know Smith, my guy. I he's know. My guy. He's an A.J. Allmendinger fan. He's got to make that shot, though. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's a great kid, really athletic. He's had a couple of them. He's got to he, make those. He, so you, you want to see him when he gets the ball. He'll finish. He's up, so athletic, so powerful. Go up and finish that thing. Get the foul opportunity if you don't make the bucket. Every, Try to dunk it. Brad, every time I watch a game, you, Billis, Seth Greenberg, Dockage, Everybody's talking about just going up strong yeah. and fast and everybody's hesitating so much when you're a big guy That seems to be a trend that we're seeing in college basketball. Well, what happens is you, you try to gather yourself all, all players think they need to gather themselves and Realistically if you don't gather yourself you're ahead of the curve So you make the mistake of taking time to gather yourself and then you end up not being able to get the shot on Nice shot by Sheldon McClellan his third three of this ball game Tenth leading scorer in the ACC Miami's best score offensively all season long That's a way to pay him back to that screen Bojanovski, Jakiri went straight up defensively. Bojanovski just couldn't finish. Boy, man, that's the shot you want to if you're Florida State. That's all you can ask for. Good wraparound pass by Thomas. He finds Jakiri, and now Miami with another spurt to answer the Seminoles. They're back up by nine. Jakiri showed great hands catching that basketball. They came fired, firing to him within about a four foot space. Great play, good teammate play. And no surprise, Miami staying in the zone against a Florida State team that doesn't shoot that well from the outside. But they get a post look for Smith, who has to shoot it over Jakiri. I like that. Good job by Smith, not going away from what he's done the past several times and posting up aggressively and strong. If you continue to do that, teammates are going to throw you the ball. I mean, it's a 2-3 zone, but it's a kind of a spread out 2-3 zone. Miami extends it a lot. Yeah, they move. They're, they're very, very aggressive with their zone. So the perimeter players are actually out trying to defend the basketball almost like a, 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 a covered up man on the perimeter a little bit so it creates space mcclellan passed it up lacan saw smith flying in at him jakiri's got the advantage on the inside and reed cuts to the rim but can't finish excellent pass i mean the interior passing is, is really at a high level for miami just couldn't finish the shot every pass on that possession was really solid yeah. bojanovsky tries the bump got the bucket he'll go to the line well, I like what he does with trying to utilize his body. I mean, I actually thought he got fouled three plays ago when he caught the ball on the on the block. Catches the ball, 16, 17 feet from the basket. Goes in, creates contact. Good job. That's four fouls now on Joe Thomas at six foot seven. Moves really well for a seven foot three guy talking yeah. about Morris. He does a good job putting the ball on the floor. Good hands. You said it earlier. He's got some point guard skills yeah, when got, he's out of the perimeter he can drive etc got great hands i was watching catch the ball before the, the game today just really good supple hands and he moves his feet very well he's got eight points off the bench the sophomore from the slovak republic four point game once again and angel rodriguez is going to be headed to the scorers table for miami Oh, Reed was seeking space. That was the right idea, looking for Thomas, but he traveled with the basketball. The Florida State down by four takes over. We'll see one of the unbeaten teams in the country coming up on the women's side. Two unbeatens left. One of them is number one, South Carolina. They got to go on the road in the SEC to take on Ole Miss. That's at 4:30 Eastern on ESPNU. Dawn Staley doing a fantastic job with the Gamecocks. Tiffany Mitchell still doing big things. The SEC Player of the Year last year. Inside of 12 to play here in the second half. It's turned into a competitive game after Miami led by 16. Berwick turns it over. Lacan running through traffic. McClellan passed up on a three. Well, Lacan was just really aggressive defensively. He was absolutely being up. Created that opportunity for his teammate. Rob thought he got away with a travel, even though he kind of awkwardly landed. McClellan bodies up. Wow. Runs into Bojanovsky, who goes down to the deck holding his head. Oh, a scary moment here, and you hope Bojanovsky's all right. He went down pretty quickly. This will take us to a timeout as they check on Boris. We were starting to go through him, and uh, he was starting to uh, establish a nice presence down there. So uh, I hope Boris is, uh, hope he's okay. Florida State staying with a bit of a bigger lineup here with Brandon and Kofer and Turpin. Sheldon McClellan is at the free throw strike. Excellent score has nine points so far today. He's been held to single digits in back-to-back -back games against Cuse and Georgia Tech. 
rarity for him. Only four times all year he's been held in single digits. He will not be held there today. This doesn't seem possible. He's so active. I know. Oh, my goodness, that young man is active and always moving, always talking, always running and jumping. You just think he would be able to find opportunities in every game to score double digits. Miami goes back man to man. There is Turpin against Cruz Uceda. Slipped underneath him and got the two. Nice pass down to Turpin. A nice job by Kyle to keep those feet moving. Even when the body was up on him, he continued to seek an opportunity for an opening, and he found it. Good job. Don't want to call Miami's lineup small, but it's a little smaller than they can and have gone. Shakiri is back at the scorer's table for the Hurricanes. Yeah, they're going to get some size back on the, the floor with Thomas or without Thomas. So to help. Oh, there you go. Friendly roll for Angel Rodriguez. His second three of the game. He's got eight points. That three-point lead a moment ago for Miami was as close as Florida State had been since being down double digits. Good to see Boris Bojanovsky back on the bench for Florida State after being treated in the locker room. Booker trying to swerve his way inside, and he draws a foul. There is Bojanovsky. Good, good to see. Good to see. Hopefully he feels 100% and then get him back in the basketball game. Shakiri is going to come in for Cruz Yuseda. Lacant just picked up his first foul for the Hurricanes. That's a nice luxury to have a seven footer just walk over to you and reach yeah. his hands up to get the inbound in. Just toss it up there a little bit, Tor. <laughs> and Turpin. Wow. What a move by Kyle Turpin oh. to get inside. Boy, looked a lot like his dad. Turning into the big body into the middle, using that left hand. I love the, the ability to use both hands. That is outstanding by Kyle Turpin. And Mel was a fabulous, yes. fabulous basketball player at Kentucky and Absolutely. then was a great pro teammate of yours. Yes. Could really play. Oh, Turpin almost got caught as he was trying to show on the perimeter. Jakiri was open for one split second and couldn't get the ball. Rodriguez, big three. Tipped up by Jakiri, one of the best rebounders in the conference, just could not corral it. And the last two times that Turpin's got the ball, he's done a good thing with it. Well, Bojanowski goes out, Turpin comes in. Look at this nice drive to the left, which is really difficult to do for a big guy who's right-handed. So, and then the, before he gets a nice body right there from you said it, but he keeps moving. He keeps looking for a hole to get his shoulders into to get that shot off. That's really good basketball by Kyle. Miami brings in a little bit of size off the, or a little bit of speed off the bench, I should say. We got Reed back out there with LeCant and Rodriguez. And then Joe Thomas stays in the ball game with Jakiri in the front court. They go three guards here, and three guys who can defend very well. I'll tell you, Rattan Mays has not had the day we, we expected offensively, but right. with Rodriguez on and gardening defensively, he's got to take care of that. But he's got to watch that ball so so effectively. It's, it's hard for him to look for a shot. Kofer, they got it down to the post again in Florida State, but Kofer couldn't flip it in. It's okay. Like the shots you're getting at the Florida State, it's a totally different game than they played in the first half. So there's opportunity there. Now we got to play a little better defense. They got to play a little better defense on Miami. Lacant for Jakiri, smooth. But Rattan Mays was just riding Lacant, and he stayed poised and found Jakiri. Did not panic at all. You're absolutely right, Adam. And, and stepped further into that lane, looking for his teammate Jakiri, put him in a good position. Rodriguez defended Rattan Mays, who got his own miss. Got it to Brandon. Brandon is having a monster second half, Brad. Great team play again. Great team play. 17 points for Brandon. 11 here in the second half. Eight and a half to play. It's a four-point game. Didn't think we'd been saying that about an hour ago. <laughs> I didn't either. Well, he's just so poised and smooth, and he does not, you said it right, he does not panic when he gets into the lane. He lets the play continue to develop no matter what he's doing. Dribbling the basketball, looking to pass it. He continues to, to evolve, and they end up getting a good opportunity. Rattan Mays last to touch, still four to shoot for Miami here. And now the call is overturned. Good look by Rattan Mays to find Monte Brandon, who's led the charge for Florida State. Originally ruled a moment ago Miami basketball with four on the shot clock. Well, you saw Michael Stevens talk about it with another official, and the rule... Uh, ruling was overturned and now it's Florida State ball 
with a chance to get as close as they have been since they trailed by 16 in the first and 11 at halftime. This That's is the closest it's been since 11 and a half in the first, Brad. Got to take advantage of all these opportunities when you have them to get back in this basketball game and Wojnowski back in the game like that. There he is, but he got oh. called for a traveling violation. I don't like that. I mean, I, I don't like I think that is an excellent play by Florida State. And I think they just got that taken away from him. I disagree with that call. Crucial turnover. It's the 15th for the Knowles who are within four. A break, man. <laughs> Come on. I know you always, whether it's <laughs> and it, and it, it's not just Florida State. I'm sure it's Miami, too. You, you feel the same way about Shakiri. You're all about defending the big man. You're daggum right. You see him roll to the basket <laughs> like that. They get an extra half step as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Rodriguez beat Rattan Mays off the dribble, but good rotation by Florida State. Sherman will take a three. Rodriguez skies up top to slap that back to Lacan. What an athletic play by Angel Rodriguez. I mean, he went up 12 feet in the air to get that basketball wow. back in his teammates' possession. Took a, a chance on getting a foul, but continues to do the little things. It's helping this team be successful today. Not shooting the ball well at all again, but absolutely continues to fight and hustle. Oh, you got it stuffed there. He's just three of 11 from the floor. Angel Rodriguez today. And I actually think he was looking to pass that basketball at him as he was driving to the lane. And Bojo just blocked out the sun on it. One of the best blockers in Florida State history. Sixth all time at FSU in shot blocks is Boris Bojanovsky. 20 on the shot clock for the Knowles here. A little bit more of that inside presence basketball I want to see. They, they've done a good job getting back into this game talking about Florida State. Let's see them continue to develop the pattern of aggressive basketball, getting that ball on the block, kicking it out. And, and, and they, you know, they don't have to score it inside, but I like it going in there because it makes the defense shift and maybe even drop back in double team as, as Miami goes into the zone. So they're going to drop back and collapse on top of the, the interior pass. Maybe it gives you a, a shot on the, on the perimeter. Open and, shot. And it's interesting because anytime they've gotten on the block in the pubs against the zone, there have been open spaces for the big guys to actually just go to the rim. It yeah. was kind of odd to see that. Yeah, that's right. And, and it looked like Booker there was trying to actually throw a little pass to Smith. I think there. that was the thought. But yep. Got to be decisive. Here's McClellan. He's hit a couple of threes today. He's got the lengthy Smith on him. Florida State kind of almost has his own look here a little bit. It was the matchup zone. It was matchup zone. That's right. McClellan in a tough spot, and Brandon nearly knocked it away. Lacant with a shot clock winding down is unable to do anything with it. So the Seminole defense comes up big again. The ninth Miami turnover of this game. We've seen that several times throughout this second period. This basketball team playing very staunch defense, so you know they can do it possession after possession. Now let's go down the other end and get a good shot. Get a great shot. Something you practice every day running through, executing to the fullest extent. Let's get a great shot. Boy, Sherman is such a big body. He's bodying up on Bojanovsky down low. Here is Rattan Mays to a cutting Brandon. He'll go to the free throw line on a Jakiri foul, which is his fourth of this game with 5.49 to play. Amazed with Rattan Mays, who's been a prolific scorer the last several games, he's made himself a complete facilitator today, and has keeps putting the ball in the in, in the guy who's hot, Brandon. Yep. Uh, they keep putting it in his hands. I like that. I talked to Monte Brandon a couple of weeks ago before that Syracuse game that we had on a Sunday night, and I asked him what is Xavier Rattan Mays's role, and he says sometimes it's for him to get 20 points. Sometimes it's for him to get 10 assists or try to get 10 assists, which he's done in the game this year. So the role definition, while it wasn't there early in the season because of injury and suspension and things of that nature, when it wasn't there early, it has been there a little bit more progressively as the season has gone on for the Florida State Seminoles. And we see it today because he's not hunting for his shot. He's looking to, to make continuity on the, on the offensive end, which is great. That's a very unselfish basketball player. That's what makes your team better. Florida State switching out of the perimeter. Still more of a matchup zone and a man-to-man -man look here, too. Reed trying to slither inside. It came out loose. Four straight trips with a turnover for Miami. Here is Booker. Inside Smith throws it down. He'll have a chance to tie the game. 
Outstanding play by Booker. And I was concerned when he caught that basketball. We've seen him make some, some pretty tough decisions. But, boy, he absolutely spotted up on his teammate. He saw Smith the whole time. Nice little shovel pass. Complete possession on both ends of the floor for Florida State. Bojanowski gets his hand on the basketball. Great job. Nice drive by Booker right there. Look at him just being aware of his teammate. We are talking about Booker, a guy who has still not scored in this game. Big time play there for Florida State. Smith will go to the line with a chance to tie it. The last time it was tied, it was 13-13 at the under-12 media timeout. These were Brad's keys to the game. Push the pace for Miami for some turnovers. They did that very well in the first half. They hit six threes in the first half, only two here in the second. And Florida State has done a better job, still not great, but better of holding out of the basketball. Looks like I know what I'm talking about a little once bit Once in a while, here. right? Once, once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you nailed it, Brad. I mean, yeah. everything that we talked about at the top has really played itself out, especially here in the about 15 minutes of the second half. Yeah, both of these teams, I, I, and, and, and I still like the aggressiveness that Miami has as a, as a unit. They've made some mistakes, obviously the last several possessions and turning that basketball over has been key because they're all about possession out possession you keeping the score they want to score up in the 70s and at this rate it may not get there this is how we roll on sundays in the acc if you didn't know it was a 16 point game it's tied at 51. A lot of contact between Bojanovski and Jakiri, and it'll be a foul on Boris. Jakiri still playing with four fouls, being very aggressive. He's such a smart player. You can't get ten rebounds a game if you're not an intelligent player, and Tanya Jakiri is certainly that. And under most circumstances, the shot that McClellan took, you would say, man, that's a poor shot. But I'm telling you, after watching this team practice and the things they go to and talking to Coach Laranega and the theories on scoring the ball, they won't balance. That's a good shot in their offense. Even though it came early in the shot clock, they feel like they can make that the majority of the time. McClellan has hit three threes yeah. in this game as well. You can understand why you'd want to shoot it. Under five to play. Tie game. McClellan on the deck. And a very aggressive drive. Draws a foul. That's a great time defensively for the weak side defender as soon as he turns the corner to step in front of him and take that charge. He put his head and shoulders down when he turned that corner and he was going one direction. That's an excellent chance defensively to step in Florida State wise and take that charge as he's out of control. Well, Sheldon McClellan is one of the best free throw shooters in the conference. He's one for three in this game. He is 82% on the year. That's fifth in the ACC. Yeah, looking at his stroke. I mean, the first shots he shot this season, I thought it were automatic all day long. Looks good. Yeah, so he splits a pair. Miami back up by one. A bucket gives Florida State its first lead since it was 13 to 11 in the first half. Rattan Mays puts the Moles on top. Good job turning the corner, getting in, now being the facilitator all day long. The defense is looking at him, looking where he's going to pass the ball. He went ahead and took the opportunity to be aggressive and score himself. Rodriguez over Bojanovski. To carry an offensive rebound. It didn't touch rim. So the shot clock didn't reset. McClellan in the traffic. And an offensive foul. There you go. Bojanovski stepping in there. McClellan a little bit out of control, leaving his feet. There's that charge I was talking about. Someone stepping in, taking that charge. Leaves his feet. Step up, take that charge. Good job. It's just what we we're talking about. Yep. What Miami team is going to show up on a nightly basis? Ooh. That's got to be the question in Jim Laranega's mind. The most enigmatic team in the ACC. Bretan Mays. He was watching it. He thought that was going to be drained. But he missed it. Here comes Miami shooting for the lead. Reed to Jakiri to McClellan. Hurricanes lead. But McClellan is a confident cat. I'm telling you. Woo. He is looking to get that rock up, Jack. He doesn't care who's on him, where he's at. 
Where are you at the shot clock? It is going up. <laughs> You said it. You wanted to see. You don't mind him shooting the basketball. That's a scorer right yeah, there. Yeah. McClellan. And he's so aggressive. You love his aggressive mentality. A long pass to the post. Smith tried to body up on Jakiri. Reed ran it down. 3-12 to play. Here comes Angel Rodriguez. And in no hurry. Jim Laranega calling a set from the sideline. Just weaving to burn some clock. 15 on the shot. Rodriguez with 10. McClellan a three. In and out. Good position by Smith for the board. Florida State shoots for the lead with 240 to play. Not the shot by McClellan. That was it's in a good and shot. out. I mean, that ball is halfway down again. That is a good shot. Booker has not scored in this game. Third leading scorer averaging 11 for the Knowles. Bojanovski, Rattan Mays, Smith and Brandon, the five out there for Florida State. Ten to shoot for Rattan Mays. Against the great defender in Rodriguez. Doubled with the help of Jakiri. Rotated to Bojanovski with two. Bojanovski missed it. Tapped by Smith. Booker got it stripped on his knees. Got it knocked away. Here comes Rodriguez. And he's fouled by Monte Brandon. And that'll take us to a timeout on the floor. 2-0-3 to play. Miami up by one. The Knowles look for the upset. Miami looking for the bounce back. You, you go nowhere. You got to the play. With the wrong wiper blades, you could be on the road to trouble. But with Michelin's team of the first half by 11 at halftime, the lead has been traded over the last few minutes here in the second half. Florida State has been <clears throat> very, very you know, staunch defensively. They continue to chip away offensively. I like the pick and roll high that they're trying to create opportunity uh, out, on the, out on, the, on the perimeter with Smith coming off of Mays or Booker. Trying to get that roll to the, to the middle of the lane for shot opportunity. Boy, Rodriguez missed the free throw, and Florida State yeah. has it with two to play. This Can't is rare shot. to see from Miami. Can't make a shot. Yep. Third best free throw shooting team of the ACC at 72% has missed some clutch ones today. Brandon has had the big second half to help Florida State get back into this game. Booker has not scored. Turpin on the block. Gives Florida State the lead. Great post up by Turpin. Excellent post up. Coming in and making himself huge. You give that guard no choice but to throw you that basketball when you post up that big and strong. And that little jump hook is all day long. Rodriguez wants it. The pitch to Reed. Steps in for a deep two. In and out. Run down by Rattan Mays. It looks like that goal just has something has rubber inside of it. It bounces out of that rim every time. Man. Under a minute to play. We've changed the leads multiple times in this ball game. 55-54 Seminoles leading. Haven't beaten a ranked team since December of 2013 when they knocked off UMass on a neutral floor. Rattan Mays. Slipping inside, left it short. Here comes Miami. Shot clock is up. Two timeouts if they want to use them, and Jim Laranega will use one right here with 28.2 remaining. Boy, I don't, I don't mind the shot opportunity. Rattan Mays turns a corner off the screen of, of Kyle Turpin. Just couldn't quite get the touch on it to get the shot down, but a nice play. I got no problem with the play. Reason to help Miami upset the top 10 Gators. 55-54, Miami trails by one. Shot clock is off, 28.2 remaining. Rodriguez, Jakiri, Reed, LeConte, and McClellan, the five out there for the Canes. We'll go to Angel Rodriguez. Ten seconds to go. Guarded by Rattan Mays. The pitch, Reed pumps. McClellan with four. McClellan with two. McClellan for the win. In and out. Florida State with the upset over number 23, Miami.
The Seminoles erase a 16 point first half deficit, come all the way back in a fabulous final six minutes of this ballgame between these two.